Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim, and this is another Real Ideal Gear Review. I have to apologize up front because I had a jaw surgery 24 hours ago, so my jaw, my mouth, um, the inside of my mouth is swollen, and so my speech uh, is going to be a little bit more slurry than usual. <laughs> so I apologize up front. But today we're going to be looking at the Casio MWD-110. This is a new release as of January 23rd. And this is a watch that has some similarities to other watches that are out there. And you'll find at the very end uh, what I think of the overall, the overall impressions I have of this watch compared to other watches of similar design and that. So let's get started with the five things that I typically go through. Size, fitment, finish, accuracy, legibility, and loom. So for the size, keep in mind that this is a watch of the same general uh, dimensions as a dive watch. So you have something that is wide, it's a little bit longer, and it is a little bit taller than the other Casio, the entry-level Casios that you typically might see, such as the Royale, um, or even the Greyman, the 800 series, Casio 800. So these are watches that typically are a little bit more slim on the wrist. This one is not. This one has more of that toolish diver type look to it. It comes with some consequences with it, because when you have a taller watch like this, you end up with an acrylic crystal on the top, you end up with the possibility of a lot more scratches happening to the crystal over the display. So keep that in mind. As far as like how this compares to other divers, when you go from edge to edge on the, uh, the nine o'clock and the three o'clock position on the 110, it's really the same size case as my Casio Pathfinder minus the crown. And even my Seiko Samurai, and that almost includes the crown. So like I said, this is actually a wide watch. Um, it's also a little bit longer. It's longer than the Casio Royale, and it's longer than the Gray Man. I believe it's a little bit longer than the G-Shock Square, but it's a little bit it has a little more length to it, lug to lug. It is a lightweight watch. It does have a wider strap. That strap, keep in mind, is also thicker. I'll throw a picture up here of that. It's thicker, and it also has this big notch in there up by the lug, which actually creates a rigidity and a height because of where that notch ends up on my wrist, which is on one of my, I think it's my ulna, the thumb bone off my uh, forearm. It sits on that bone and forces the watch to tend to be higher on the wrist even more. So I'm not a huge fan of this strap. I think the strap needs to be redesigned or replaced. Um, so just keep that in mind. The buttons are bigger. If you look at the, the same picture, you're going to look at and see that the buttons on the case itself are bigger easier to use fitment you have the same issues i have the same issues with this with all casios that their holes the intervals for the pin and buckle system are just too far apart you either get one that's a little bit too tight or a little bit too loose and that's the same case with this one so <clears throat> i combine that with a watch that tends to sit higher and it tends to sit a little more loose um, and now it's slapping around in your wrist and it just it almost compounds the issues with this uh, acrylic crystal being really banged up more than it should be. The uh, finish on this watch, you have, a, you know, this one's a bicolored watch. It has a, a Cassie Oak and a, a G-Shock Square kind of combo look to it. So that's kind of nice. It is a little different than both of those other watches. Um, but it is black plastic. It is a resin band, pretty much basic type Casio entry-level watch. It is That makes it lightweight, easy to wear as far as weight goes. The lettering on the silver bezel, so to speak, is etched in, so the chances of that being rubbed off are pretty low because the black paint that is inside that etching is not on the surface. It's actually recessed into the bezel, which I think is a nice touch. And keep in mind, again, that strap is wider um, and thicker. It doesn't flex as much. So as far as the finish goes, you're going to have that strap kind of being out there a little bit more. There is a, a system on the strap and the keeper of notches so that the keeper doesn't slide around on you. Once you get your watch set up on your wrist, everything should sit there for the time being until you take the watch off, which I really like that system. I think that's a great finishing piece to the strap. Accuracy-wise, no issues with accuracy. It's the typical Casio Quartz. 
Um, you might lose a few seconds every week, um, but not a big deal. Um, I, my personal opinion is it should not be that far off. <laughs> oh, one other thing. So also with accuracy, I took this out for a day hike, made a fire. You'll see some photos of that or some video of that as well. And uh, just my using the watch with a handsaw and putting it through some of the, the typical like moderate use of a watch like this, it handled it just fine. Other than it was a little sloppy on the wrist. And so I tried it both tightened down and loose. And, and in, either, in either situation, it wasn't quite as comfortable as I wanted to, especially with the movement that I was involved with putting together a, a mini campsite. So um, as far as accuracy goes, no issues there. Legibility and loom or light is really good. The number, the size of the numbers on this watch are comparable to the Casio 800 series watch. Um, so I would have no hesitation with, with wearing this watch in low light conditions or without my reading glasses because the time numbers, you know, the hours, minutes, and seconds are much bigger. They're bigger than the G-Shock Square, they're bigger than the Royale, and they're bigger than my Pathfinder. So I like it. That's one thing I do like. The day date, I do not like. It's the complete opposite. If you look at the pictures and the photos here, the Wednesday, that doesn't even look like a W. When I look at it, and I cannot get this out of my mind, it looks like an L-U-E. And maybe someone can comment what you guys see when you look at the day on this watch, but it does not look like a W-E for Wednesday. And unless I'm missing something, uh, this is just a poor execution, I think, on the Wednesday uh, display or the, the day display for Wednesday. And then there's the 10-second countdown window or display. I don't understand that. I don't, I'm not sure why people or why the engineers who put this thing together, why they like that. They just want to have something moving on the display that just, I don't know, forces people to kind of stare at the watch. I don't like it. Matter of fact, if they would take that out and put a bigger day date display on there, I would much more appreciate that than to have a useless 10 second countdown display window. That to me is just wasted space. Um, I do like to see the modes, the four four quadrants to the right of that countdown, that useless 10 second countdown display. That I do like because I do swap watches, I do swap Casio watches, and sometimes you forget, you know, which mode you're in or whatever so having a display is great it lets me show that one annoyance i have though with this particular programming is that when you make an adjustment let's say you're in the stopwatch you use the stopwatch start and stop and you clear it and then you hit the mode button it takes you right back to home time now for some people they might like it for me as a, as a preference i'm not a fan of it um, i don't mind going through the different modes um, so i to me it's just one of those things that i wish there was some continuity between the different models of Casio so that you didn't have to remember, oh, this one goes back to home time, or this one goes back, you know, through the modes. Especially, let's say it's a low light situation, and you're by memory trying to go through the modes and get back to the home time, which is almost always a different beep if you have the beep on. So those are all things that come together, but if they were just the same, you wouldn't have to worry about it as much. Not that I worry about it, but you'd get the idea. Um... Of all the Casio watches that I have, this is probably the least comfortable one to wear. Not only is it the combination of the strap and, and setting up the strap to you know, fit my wrist as best it can, which the spacing on those holes is, I think, too far apart, but then you have an extra heavy strap, and then you have that notch in the strap up by the, the lug, and you have a taller, excuse me, a taller case. And all of those things combined um, just make for a taller watch that's a little more sloppy on the wrist, and it's just more rigid as far as the strap goes. So it's not my favorite design at all when it comes down to it. And also when you look at the, the functions of this watch, it has the traditional st uh, stopwatch. It has a traditional uh, dual time zone. The countdown timer is a recurring countdown timer. So what that means is that when you set it and you hit go with the timer, and for me, let's say it's six hours, it goes until six hours, it beeps, as soon as it starts beeping, it sets back up for another six hours, which for me right now is useful because I'm taking antibiotics and every six hours I have to take another antibiotic. So I just set up my recurring countdown timer and there I go. And it goes and goes and goes until you actually turn that countdown, that recurring countdown timer off. The alarm is good. It's, it's a single alarm, but it doesn't have the day date set like you would on the Casio W800, the Gray Man watch. On that watch, you can set the, the actual date and the alarm time and it can go off, you know, in, in a 24-hour period further down the line. So that, to me, is a much better setup 
than this just a simple alarm with, you know, um, yeah, the hourly signal, I think, is also a part of that, too. But the alarm, it, it could have been better, you know, make it a little bit different. Um, but it's actually less useful than the, the Gray Man. So when I look at this, um, with this watch, I would, I would say that there is too much overlap with the W800H. And for me, the W800H is actually a better watch for a few things. The display, um, you have the date, the day date that you can set on the alarm. Um, the, the Gray Man, you have to go in and hack to get the timer. Granted, that's already included on the 110. But I think the, the, the size and the flexibility of the strap, it's not as maybe as durable, but they certainly should have used a different kind of material for the strap on the 110. But I think overall the Grayman has a, has a better setup than this one. So I would, and they both have 100 meters of water resistance, so no issues with water. So I'd give this an 8 out of 10, and I wouldn't give any flexibility for anything on this one. Um, it's 8 out of 10. It's not a recommended one. I'd go after the, the Grayman. So there you have it. That's my review of the Casio MWD-110. Uh, 8 out of 10, not recommended. Go get the W800H. I think it's a better value, and it's a much better watch, easier watch to wear. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I'm always looking for review ideas um, or even other gear ideas. I'll be starting up doing some lawn maintenance and also some pocket knives that I carry as far as reviews go and just combinations of, of all the above. So leave your comments and questions down below. I appreciate your time and watching. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Take care.